And look who is here right now <laughs> here on the program. We already had Matt Damon on the show. And the man who Matt Damon plays in the movie Air that's again in theaters on Wednesday, April 5th, right here on the Rich Eisen Show, is Sonny Vaccaro in the flesh. How you doing, Sonny? Good to see you. I'm doing as well as I've ever done since I married Pammy uh, a long, long time ago, Rich. Uh, it's it's something that you know you just can't grasp. At least someone like myself, what's what's been happening as far as the movie as goes. As far as the movie goes, because yes. I was going to ask, you know, you were mentioning your, your wife Pam, who's sitting here in studio, um, you know, uh, watching us talk to one another, and uh, you know, so many people when they say, "Hey, if they make a movie about something in your life or about you." Who would you want to play you? I mean, Matt Damon's pretty high up on the list for a lot of people, Sonny. You know, you can go to any generation <laughs> you want, and there's a few Matt Damons every time along sure. the way. Yeah, yeah. That'll live forever in the in the skills that he has, and that's that's film and movies and acting and all that. You can't get any better. And Ben and you know Viola. In fact, the whole cast mm -hmm. is sort of like you know the Frank Sinatra, the first you know yeah. the first when he got the old gang together in, sure. in Ocean's Eleven, right? I yeah, mean, this right. is what we're talking. By about. By the way, another movie that Matt's been in is Ocean, the, the it's, second it's, version. Yeah, of the Ocean's no, right, 11. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Matt, Matt's been in everything. I mean, God, God bless him. He it played a soldier. He played a you know a guy who was crazy and you know whatever. That, but the most important thing, and we'll get on with your show, Rich. Sure, yeah. The one that I remembered forever and I loved him for, not you know the. The, the guy that loses his memory and has 25 and it lasts forever mm -hmm. is gambling movie rounders one of the best gambling movies ever done that in cincinnati kid i i've gambled and I, I enjoy poker and all that and i've told matt i said i can always go over the whole thing i thought i think that's what bounded me to to never think this day would happen rich sure and it's odd that uh, you say you love poker sonny since in the film um you know yeah. uh, the sonny vaccaro character cleans up on a trip to vegas yeah. with a big fat wad of cash i mean i saw that part of the movie i was then very I, impressed then i sevened out and lost all the damn money <laughs> and I, okay uh, so i gotta tell the story of that so that's okay that's true too okay yeah, that, 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 that's uh, that's good it's funny so um i, I love the movie and uh, I, I i i think it is just uh it 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 felt like it lasted five minutes. And I was also on the edge of my seat, even though I knew, obviously, you would wind up getting Michael Jordan to right, sign on right, the dotted yeah. line. Um, what is your recollection of signing Michael Jordan? Well, the, the last scene, and you know, in the public, and it's the first time I'm saying it ever, I think, because I never thought there'd be a movie of it. So why would I bring it up? In fact, after I saw the game, where I first saw Michael was when they beat Georgetown. And, you That's know, the and first time you ever That's saw him? That's the first time. And the last time I saw him until Tony Roma two years later. I, I never, Michael Jordan was on my A-list. That day that he hit that shot, Georgetown, and you know, because you followed my life, Georgetown mm -hmm. was one of our Nike teams. John Thompson was one of my best friends in life. He, he hit that shot that beat the team that was working for Nike at that time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we had Nike, had nothing to do with North Carolina, never met you know, Dean Smith. And you had so, never seen Michael Jordan ever, play. And never saw him play again until he went pro. I'm very honest about that. Uh, and that's the irony of the whole movie, and that's what the public's going to get. The way Matt played that scene of me, you know, having psychologically the, the, the film and all that stuff, that's an improvement because in my mind, what Matt did was make a whole scene out of exactly what I told him happened in my mind. Which was which, the which, fact that you saw Jordan calmly make the shot right and that dean smith had clearly drawn up a play Absolutely. for him at that young stage of his life james worthy one of the greats of that era you know come across and drag the defensive man with i never forgot that then i was home i was mad because we didn't win we being georgetown and yes. john and all the kids and patrick and i never thought about it until the day they brought me into nike and asked me to talk about signing an athlete that they never had. They had pros, as you know, but they never had a signature guy. So to go, you know, to go where you want to take me on the show, Rich, I, I want to say, you know, that that scene that Matt replayed and he eloquently talked about it to the public mm -hmm. in that three or four minute piece explains my mind. If I, I can't just keep saying, well, I saw him and I liked him, mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense, right? And that's why I never talked about it before. But if you explained it to him, I saw something that just stuck in my mind. And as life went through for me, I had an ability somehow because, you know, to use this on your show today, mm -hmm. I did 
see Kobe would never saw him before. I did see Tracy McGrady never did was involved with LeBron when he was a sophomore and a junior in high school. Mm-hmm. I have a gift. Uh, other, you know, the gift is I, I think I can tell talent at, at a low level or a small level or whatever level that was. And it was nothing planned. I didn't know anything about it. In fact, if you would have asked me, you know, early in my life, basketball was the least interesting sport to me. I, I was a pretty good athlete, but I was horrible in the, in the game of basketball, even getting there. But to go to the movie, it is so direct. And uh, you have more questions for you. Mm-hmm. But that scene, to me, tells the public, that's why we signed him. There was no logic for me to say against the other f- people in the room that day were more powerful at Nike than I was. Yes. I ran to college saying I had nothing to do with the pros. Sonny Vaccaro here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, again, airs in theaters on Wednesday, April 5th. Wow, so many different ways to go uh, with you after what you just said. But um, Kobe, you said you saw, when, when did you see him? And you're like, okay, that's oh. that's the that's another one of the guys here. When was that? When I went to Adidas, my job was to find the next Mike. Mm-hmm. Like that that's the guy. Yeah, they're like, yeah, do it again. And, and, you know, and, <laughs> do it again. And, and, and Adidas and, and Rob Strasser, who's in the media, they had bought, Rob Strasser and Peter Moore mm-hmm. acquired Adidas America from the parent company. Using the money that you guys made from Nike? Well, pretty it, much. It was his, not mine. No, they, I, right, his. Yeah, right. yeah well, yeah. Well, I mean, th- due to your decision, it well, right, help. But, but right. my point, I had nothing to do with the financial Understood. buying of that stuff. Yeah. So they went, they invited me to join them. I was doing okay. My wife was a very successful commercial actress in mm-hmm. the 90s. Mm-hmm. We were making a living, okay, after yes. I got fired. Sure. I, I'm fired now when they do that. And uh, Peter and Rob, they're both passed away now, as you know. You know, they bought it. They invited me to join. And right after that, you know, Rob died like six months into the new buy. The first, and Peter was named president. Mm-hmm. And he said to me, what do you think we got to do? I said, well, I, we can't redo what we do. We have to find the next guy. And I said, let's just start with the high schools. Mm-hmm. I then, Adidas sponsored about 50 high schools that, that next year. And I got to know the kids. Now here's what happened. So that my my internship goes in this new job. I said to them, let me go to New York for a year. They rented an apartment for nine months for Pam and I. Mm-hmm. A very nice thing. I went to New York and my thing to the public was, I everything happens in New York City. Sure. I'll see the pros, I'll see the colleges. And what I wanted to do was see the high school because my ABCD camp gave me entree to all the new great young kids. The ABCD camp was my, that was my, that started my second life, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm past, I'm I'm fired, I'm no longer, I don't have control of college teams anymore, I don't have any teams like I did at Nike. So we get college teams one at a time. And here's what happened. I started the ABCD camp. Mm -hmm. I knew about, in 1992, or 72, Mm -hmm. Joe Bryant, played in my Dapper Dan round ball classic. He was the MVP. That's Joe Jellybean Bryant. I know who that is. In the next year, okay, Chubby Cox plays in the Dapper Dan round ball classic. That was, you know, his mother, that, that's her maiden name, it's Cox. Okay, Joe, it's Joe's wife, okay, Pam. And, and so all the, I'm there, I hadn't seen Joe since 1972. He played in the NBA, he went to Europe, they lived in Italy, Kobe was brought up in Italy. Right. Okay. He comes, he goes to a friend of mine named Gary Charles, who was a main help to me in the, in the AU movement. Jerry, Gary came with me in the 1990s when I got, you know, let go. Mm-hmm. Joe comes over and he talks to Gary and he reintroduces me to Joe. And Joe talks to me and he said, Joe, you know, I'm sure I remembered. He was the MVP. Okay. I, he said, Sonny, can I get my son into ABCD camp? I I did that a lot. ABCD camp was for the, the best, but I always brought in guys who may not have been the best and or somebody's wish. I did that. It, it so, wasn't you're, an awkward. so you're like, sure, for Joe Jelly, Brian, I'll do it. And I'll I knew he had to be it. something, right? right Joe sure. was a great player, and so was Chubby. So and then good... Kobe walks in? Is that what you're saying? No, they're there. They're there, okay. there. Okay. So Gary brings him over and reintroduces me to him. So he talks about, so I put Kobe in camp. Camp's over one week, okay? And as you know, yeah, or whatever. I swear to God Almighty, Kobe comes over to me after the camp. First time 
He was another kid of 140 that year, 130 sure. kids in camp. He made the underclassmen all-star game, which was very big at there. I, I think Jay Z was there. I, I mean, very Jay. That's the kind of people would come. It was in Far, Farley Dickinson. That's where we had to camp, so okay. it was easy to get there. And Kobe says to me, "Swear to God," he comes over and says, "Thank you, Mr. Vicaro, for inviting me to camp. I oh, appreciate it." I said, "I'm so glad to help you. Know, I hope I'll see you next year, Kobe." He said, "I got to apologize. This happened, Rich." I said, "Apologize for what, Kobe?" I want to tell you something. I'm very disappointed. I think something happened. Somebody hurt him or yeah, something, right, uh -huh. you know, whatever. What happened? Said, Next year, I'm coming back to the camp. I'm going to be the best player at this camp. Kobe said that to me. He made, like, the underclassmen all-star And he game. apologized for not doing he, better He than apologized. That? Only two people ever did that. There's a story about Michael Jordan, very similar to that, but not that. But Kobe Bryant comes over. Mm -hmm. Well, now I know in my mind, psychologically, I, I, I saw he was good, obviously, and he didn't make the all-star team. Yeah. Now he's in my thing. So my whole, we're paying the rent, you know, in that big <laughs> you know, apartment there in New York. I called Peter Moore. I said, I got the kid. What do you mean you got the kid? I, I, got, I, I know what I'm doing. What? I got a kid that's going to be great. I, I swear to God. On that day. On that day. Where he said, well, apologize he, for not doing yeah, as well as he because, thought he could. Because I knew on that day what Michael Jordan told me one day prior to that, mm -hmm. when we were making a tour of Europe and Germany, well, I'll tell you a story, but I was staying on Kobe. I knew he had the croons, okay? I knew he had the guts <laughs> to do it, okay? I never saw Kobe play a high school game. I would invite Pam and I would have his wife and him, mm -hmm. his father, never right. saw Kobe again, never, till camp, never. Now, I, I'm, I'm recruiting him. I go to his house at Christmas time, but we went to see, you know, the kid from Villanova it was pretty good. Okay. So, and, um, Kerry Kittles, that's what, you know, and Kerry was good. Yeah, sure. Kerry was in writing the lottery. So, but I disguised it by doing other things and never talking to everybody. I knew that Kobe was going to be our investment. He played through and he had a heck of a, a senior year, but not, he, he doesn't have the accolades of like some of the other kids. Sure. I mean, right. whatever. That's the day I knew Kobe Bryant was going to become part of Adidas. Everyone thinks of him now because he ended his, sure. uh, his career and his horrible, uh, the ending of Kobe. Mm -hmm. But my point, Rich, I knew that was the person. And that changed because signing Kobe, then we got Tracy. Then we got Jermaine O'Neal. Then we, we had a great shot of getting LeBron, and if LeBron would have, you know, if, if the Adidas would have done what they were supposed to, we had a better chance of getting him. But Kobe Bryant was the same mentality as Michael Jordan. I can tell you this now, the public watching it, and they all know, because I think the only guy that you can talk about today, all this goat stuff and all the greatest, that doesn't mean anything to me. You know, what means to me is how good you were in the area you're playing. Well, Kobe didn't make any friends by being nice to his teammates, okay? Kobe didn't make any friends by doing anything. When he was on that court, that was his life. There was no question about it. When he was off the court, he was whoever he wanted to be, as a husband, mm -hmm. as a whatever. We lived in Palisades Drive. We helped Kobe's parents get his first home on top of the drive. That's how close I was to the Bryants mm -hmm. as we went. So talking about Kobe and talking about Sonny Vaccaro and, and starting this whole conversation about Michael, yeah. that was the trail of my life. There was always a reason for me doing whatever was odd in society. A heck of a trail for sure. Sonny Vaccaro here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Okay, in the couple minutes I have left. So you did go to Michael's house? You did, and you knocked on, you cold not, called? Not his... physically to Michael's house. Okay. We had that conversation though. I actually talked to his mother after I met him at Tony Roma's because I had the sense there that we had a shot with him, but I knew the most important person in his life, his respect for Dean Smith was obvious. But the one thing he said to me as we sat there mm -hmm. at lunch that day, that first and only day I met him until after he signed him, mm -hmm. was his family. And I, that is what I started a phone conversation with her. She knew who I was. Mm -hmm. and, and the ending, the last scene you see where she's there, where you know, Dolores is there and making the final decision, those words happened. They didn't necessarily happen in the sites of where they're going. But Mrs. Jordan and I had those conversations. Yes. Is it is it true that uh, again in the in the film, 
uh, Jordan, you know, wanted a deal, obviously, yes. but he also wanted a car yes. out of it. And that ultimately he would have just done the deal for the car and his mom yeah. wound up getting, you know, a piece of the shoe. It, his mom ended up getting a piece of the company. Forget the shoe. <laughs> what what Michael Jordan did, and give me 30 more seconds. Go for it. He started the whole new world for athletes. He, I don't know about the goat, Rich. I said that five seconds ago to you. Yeah, yeah. But I do know there's one goat in what Michael Jordan, the goat of marketing, the goat of making money, the goat of being part owner. Michael Jordan opened that. LeBron was like the next guy that comes close to that. But there is no, no and for, for black athletes and Spike Lee and all the things that Michael did, mm -hmm. Michael Jordan to the world should be remembered is starting an industry that was not there. You can like Mar Michael, you cannot like Michael. You can think he was the best player or not the best player. That's your argument. But one thing the world knows, Michael Jordan saved a company that now is as big as it can be. Nike is as big in the, in the, in the industry mm -hmm. in the world. There's no question about the superiority of what Nike. Michael Jordan did that. No Michael Jordan, First of all, forget me being fired. I don't know if there's a Nike today. Mm -hmm. And it, however people want to argue, you can say you can argue for all that. They would have been another Reebok or another Puma. or not, not saying that they're bad. Of course, I understand. They wouldn't but, be the Nike no, that they are today. That, that, that doesn't happen. Was it his mother's idea to get a piece of the company? His mother was the idea. She, I told Michael he'd get a piece of the shoe. Mm -hmm. Rob and Peter gave me the authority. You're going to own part of this shoe. I didn't know what was going to transfer out. Dolores says, my son's going to own part of Nike. You make a dime, I make a dime. I, uh, that, 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 that let, when Viola does that, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, don't cry. Just listen to what this mother's saying. Again, listen to the year 1984. We just got off the 1960s, the 1970s. You talk about we have problems today with yeah, race and religion and everything else, Rich. Yeah. It was worse then. And this lady stood up for her son with the knowledge of like they, when they made the trip, I had the feeling we got them. But when she said, you know, I want a piece of the company. And you remember the last scene where Phil comes in and, you know, he's talking to Robin, yeah. he, he's hollering at me. What the hell did I know? I felt like we can't do, you know, but you told me to offer him. But, and Strasser did say, you know, he did give me the okay. But the, the bottom line, I can say we can sign off. However it worked out in life. Yeah. Phil and I did say, yes, let's give it to him. In the screening that I saw the movie, Sonny, um, that was an applause line when she said, mm -hmm. I want a piece. Well, and, and the whole audience clapped. You're getting goosebumps right I, now. I'm just thinking God, about it. You just, you just yeah. hit the vein. Rich, it, 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 that it, happened. It, it, was, it was really something in, in, in the theater yeah. when, when that happened. And, um, you know, uh, I mean, obviously, literally, the rest is history. Uh, again, Air is in theaters exclusively on Wednesday, April 5th. Before I let you go, Sonny Vaccaro, let's do this. I want your favorite Jerry Tarkanian story. You want to talk about <laughs> goats, okay? Well, you got, you come on, what, uh, what do you got for well, me? I need, I need a well, goat. What when, you, what's your favorite well, Jerry Tarkanian the story? Most favorite, the most favorite one was when he made the first statement, you know, you know that you, your school gets on probation, you, no one knows who the hell you are, and they allow, you know, Kentucky to go on and do whatever. You know, put him on, put the, the little school, and Kentucky violates everybody. But Jerry had so many. But the most important thing about Jerry, yes. w what he was, was the oddest looking, most successful person in the world. <laughs> well, that's true. Well, I mean, you, you want to just talk about sucking on a, on a wet towel. I mean, uh, just I mean that's one him. of them. Uh, short sleeves, nervous wreck on the bench, you know, everything. Then he goes to Las Vegas, mm -hmm. where in 1970s, when he went there, when I was there with him, yeah. in a, and I was included in it, Listen, the mob rubbed, you know, they, they ran it. What the hell am I going to tell this audience? I, I can't lie. They were my best friends. I mean, you know, and, and Jerry, we had, I, because of my friendship, yeah. I had access. Pam and I got a lot of free dinners in Las Vegas, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, so Las Vegas was special. But Jerry Tarkany is the only man that could have gone to in that university and yeah. turned it around in America. That couldn't that that they they've been good and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But Tark, his life was like this blessing. They put him in Las Vegas. Well, I mean, in in between the story that 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 takes place in Air in, yes. in '84 and the Fab Five, who you had mentioned, in between that 
was the ascension of UNLV basketball yeah. as we know it with yes. with Larry Johnson and Grandmama and, 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 and Stacy Augman and and the and rest Craig of them. And Craig Anthony. I mean, right. oh my God, yeah, I'm here. Craig Anthony. I mean, that was that was that was another team in the midst of all this with Duke taking off and obviously Michael making North Carolina a champion in the eighties. Uh, Georgetown doing what it's doing. There was UNLV doing yeah, its yeah. thing for sure. Yeah, I know you've been kind to me, and I we're over time. No, go okay, on. Let, let me go say okay. It. The game where Duke lost to Vegas in Denver when they kicked their rear end. That was that. You go back on the roster of that team. Now they win the next year, and I still think that the kids in Vegas lost a tough game. We'll just leave it at that. Sure. But let me say for your show, okay, yes, to Sonny Vaccaro personally. There were three schools. Now, I was close to all of them. I had favorite friends because of just, that's what human beings do. But I never let it interfere with my business. I never made a decision on a school because I liked you more. I may have given you a contract, but what I can tell you for the record today, the Fab Five, George San Hoyas and the Las Vegas Rebels, did more for what I was in, sell shoes, than any schools in America I at bet. that time. I bet. Those kids, those kids earned everything in those universities. But to Sonny Vaccaro, there'll never be three teams to me mm. in the world that I lived in that moved basketball forward. These, these kids who were all questioned for however, and the schools were, however all these kids who went to those particular schools at those particular times yeah. had nothing to do, and you went to Michigan. Yep. But those five kids, the Fab Five, unbelievable, unbelievable, okay? You know, John's teams, Tark's teams, they moved the needle in selling the product that I was involved in. No one ever did that and still hasn't, and they never will be like that. Sonny Vaccaro, thank you for coming on here um, on, on this program. Um, air, again, Air's a terrific movie. Oh. It is a fun frolic, just remembering what, what happened back in the day. Um, and is that an accurate portrayal of Phil Knight? In the in the film, well, yeah, it, it is uh, because you know what's you know he, he's a different person. I mean, all the things you saw about his beliefs and Buddhism yeah. and all that stuff. Right, there's nothing wrong. Everybody of has course, whatever. No, that, I mean, that, so, yeah. That's what I yeah, mean. He, yeah, know? but he was. I mean, that movie that was for real. We didn't make up him being that. You know, him with no no shoes on his feet. Right, and then coming in and saying, "I'll think about you yeah. know whether you can sign he, Jordan." He, and then he said, "I went for a run." I mean, and, like, and you know what? It's interesting. I I I was on the yo-yo. That was true. I was the stranger in 1984. Just remember, I, sure. I had nothing to do with pros. Me picking Michael was totally out of context of what my life was. Right. I didn't give a damn about the pros, to be very honest with you. I cared about the colleges and the kids in the college for my camps and for everything else that I did. My life depended on those people. Well, you certainly picked a winner, Sonny. There's no question <laughs> yeah. about it. Sonny Vaccaro, thank you for being here on this program. I like to get animated, and you helped me so much. Oh, today. you got it. It's so my good. pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet you and pleasure having <laughs> oh, you God. telling all these stories. Air is, again, available exclusively in theaters on Wednesday, April 5th, right here on The Rich Eisen Show. Catch The Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 